Amen. How many of you believe that this 2019, it flew by? Man, it flew by. I was, uh, I was talking to my dad, and we were talking. I was talking to my, my wife, too. And I was like, man, this day, I mean, this year, 2019, just like blink, and it was, it was December. And now, you know, it was already here. And most of us are looking back right now, and we think, what did we do in 2019? What did I accomplish? A lot of times we look back and go, wow, I should have done this. I could have done that. I could have done this. I could have done that. I would have, could have, should have, would have, could have lived in, the land, in that land. But some of us, we, we also lost some people. They graduated to heaven. We also got some people. We, we, we have some new friends. If you're here for the first time, and maybe this has never been your church, and now 2019, it was, you became a part of Solid Rock. Well, welcome to the family. Yeah, you have a, you're a part of the family now. Amen? Life change. Lives that, that were changed. Think about the many lives and the many things that we've done as a, as a church, as a life group, as dream teamers, as many people were changed. Many lives were changed. Many people were blessed through your giving, through your faithfulness. And so we got to look back at 2019, but we can't just stay there. We must also look forward and say, God, you're going to do some greater things. Because the Bible says that he'll do exceedingly and abundantly beyond that we think or ask. So if you thought 2019 was good, 2020 is about to blow your mind. Amen? But if you think, ah, it's going to be the same, it's always the same, well, it's going to be the same then. You've got to start speaking what you want before you even see it. It's called faith. Now, one of the things I want to encourage you is January will be the day, will be the 21 days of, of prayer and fasting. And prayer, 21 days of prayer and fasting, you need to make a decision today, not that day of, like the day that they're going to start. Start making the decision now that you're going to say, I'm going to be a part of that 21 days of prayer and fasting. Because decisions are needed. Decisions determine your destiny. That's the title of the message. Decisions determine your destiny. And so many of you here and those that are watching by live stream and, and by YouTube, we welcome you too as well. All of us have a dream. All of us have a destiny. All of us want to achieve things. But the thing you must do is that we have to make decisions. You have to make a decision. What will you do in January will, will impact everything else. And I always say that's the reason why uh, that we do this as a church because when you give God the first, the rest is blessed. And so we want to give God January, we want to make a, that whole month of January is giving it to God because then the rest of the year is going to be a blessed year. Because there's something about giving God the first that blessings come and things happen when we give God the first. When he give him the first of everything, he blesses the rest. And I believe that in 2020, for me, and I know pastor's going to come and, you know, and, and through, the, through the next couple of Sundays, he's going to then share the vision of the church. This last, this last year was what, multiplication, right? The year of multiplication. There was a lot of multiplication that happened in my life, especially right here. A lot of multiplication going around right here. But God has blessed me in multiple ways. And if you say, well, God didn't bless me, then you have not looked and see how blessed you are. You are massively blessed. You are blessed, but, but you're looking at other people's blessings and, and regulating it based on what other people have done and received. You are blessed. And you've got to start telling yourself that you're blessed. Another thing I believe in 2020 will be a year that we will be more self-aware of ourselves, more self-control, more, self, more peace of mind. I believe that 2020 is going to be that self-awareness and control and fine-tuning our purpose. It's where you fine-tune what God has for you. Don't let this year pass by of 2020 and it just becomes another year. Let this year be something that changes, that sparks something in your life and that you become a world changer. You become a, a person, a leader, that you're not just a follower, you become a leader and you multiply yourselves in many different ways. Pour your life into this next year. Pour your life into this church. Pour your life into God. Leave a legacy. And here's what it says in James chapter 1, verse 5, if you're following. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives all liberally without reproach, 
and will give it to him. But let him not ask in, but let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave in the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For, for let not that man suppose that he or she will receive anything from the Lord. This person is a double-minded person, unstable in all their ways. See, you've got to understand that you cannot be, you got to make a decision and make a transition or else if you don't make a decision, obstacles and problems and trials will deter you from the decision you made in January. You see, a lot of us are looking back and go, wow, I made all these resolutions and I, never, I didn't get to do a lot of them. And that's because you did not make a decision. You did not make a decision and you kind of were wishy-washy. And then when tri trials came, it moved you away and says, well, forget it. I just can't do it. Maybe next year. Maybe next year I'll get involved in the church more. Maybe next year I'll give. Maybe next year I'll, I'll do this. Maybe next year because of this, because of these problems, because of these issues, because of my, I lost my job or I lost this or I, I lost a friend, I lost a family member, I'm not going to do this. You cannot let trials and tribulations deter you from your destiny. You cannot let problems of this world or people deter you from your God-given purpose and your God-given destiny because God has a blessing for you. So we must not be, not be tossed and thrown around, but every decision will require a transition, a plan. Plan out your life. Don't just live life. Plan your life out on purpose. See, we got to live life on purpose, not live life on accident. See, there's a difference because we want to just, we live life just, well, tomorrow, let's see, let's see what happens tomorrow. Hey, let's see what happens. Instead of saying, no, I'm going to plan my life out. This is when I'm going to graduate. This is when I'm going to get out of debt. This is when I'm going to achieve this. This is when I, and you have a long range goal. You have a target to go after. But see, we stop talking. We stop talking about dreams. We stop believing. We stop speaking dreams. We stop believing. We stop telling people about what we wanted to do because we're afraid they, they might laugh at us or we're afraid of what people might think because what if it doesn't happen? Well, what happens, what happens if you don't say anything? What happens if you don't do anything? Then you'll be in the same life, in the same place, year after year. So we must start deciding to make decisions and make the transition and be serious about our life because think about it, this life is but a vapor. You're here today and gone tomorrow. It'll just fly by. Your kids will grow up and bam, they're on, they're on the college. They're all, they're, they're bam, you're, you're, you're retiring, bam. It's just like life is happening and we must take advantage of the times and say, God, as long as I'm here, I want to make an impact in this world. I'm here for a reason. I want to leave a legacy. And most people have a problem about making a decision. See, a lot of times people, they don't want to make a decision because they're afraid about making a decision, so they decide not to, to make a decision. So their decision is not to make a decision. <laughs> and don't you know that you really made a decision about making a decision? And so you're undecided. And guess what? You don't go nowhere. And the thing is, you think, well, I'm not going to make a decision. Well, you just made a decision. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You're now in neutral, and you're not doing nothing, and you're going to be tossed and thrown around with the days and the life of struggles and trials without being firmly grounded and saying, this is what I am going to do. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That is, is saying a statement of, of this is what we're going to do. Every time the church doors are open, we're going to do this. I'm going to get out of debt. I'm going to do, these are the things. And you have to be determined to say, this is what's going to happen in my life before it happens. It's called faith. It's not, it's not, it's not fortune telling. It's, it's prophesying. It's foretelling what is going to happen in your life before it happens. That's called faith. I'm going to foretell what's going to happen in my life before it happens. And I'm going to talk about it to everybody. I'm going to get out of debt. I'm going to get my raise. I'm going to get this. I'm going to be healed. I'm going to be this. I'm going to be that. And people will be like, what? You don't look healed. My healing's on the way. I'm just saying what's, what's going to come my way, it's coming. 
Because I'm foretelling what's going to happen in my life before it happens. How many people do you know are doing that right now? No, they're only saying what they see. And we only say, look at all this, look at this, look at that, look at this problem, look at this. Instead of saying, I know that that looks that way, but God's about to change that situation. Yeah. Well, I don't want to make a decision because what if it's the wrong decision? What happens if I make the wrong decision? The Bible says he'll make all things work according to those who are in Christ Jesus. In other words, if you make a wrong decision, God says, don't worry, I'll take care of it and I'll get you back on the right path. Just make a decision. See, we think, well, God, I'm waiting on you. And God's like, I'm waiting on you. Peter, get out of the boat. No, I don't want to get out of the boat. Well, you'll see a miracle if you step out of the boat. No, I want to see the miracle now. And it didn't happen until he stepped out of the boat. See, one decision can set you on a lifetime of a, a good and bad destiny. And it's important that you start the year with a quality decision. The world calls it a resolution. I got a resolution. Oh, that sounds pretty. No, it's a decision that's going to require you to transition and to change your life and make a decision. A decision always is something that determines a transition or a choice. James chapter 1 and verse 7, I'm going to read it in the Amplified. For such a person should not ought to think and expect that he will receive anything at all from the Lord, being a double-minded person, unstable, restless in all their ways, and everything that he or she thinks, feels, or decides. Unstable. You know, have you ever been around a person like they can't make their mind? What do you want to eat? Well, I don't know. Uh, I think I'm going to eat this. And you're like sitting there at the menu like for a one hour. Have you made your decision yet? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to eat hamburger. And then when the, and then when the waiter, waitress comes, or they come and they're like, what do you want to eat? Well, I don't know. What? <laughs> Undecided. See, see, men, a lot of women, they want, they, they're looking for a man that's going to make a decision in their life. Honey, we're going to do this. Instead of saying, well, what are you going to do, honey? I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. I don't know. They're looking for somebody to say, hey, this is what we're going to do, honey. Here's our plan. Here's what we're going to do. Don't worry about this. I, we're going to believe in God. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And they're, and they're looking for somebody to make a decision. God looks for people, too. God was looking for somebody to make a decision. Abraham decided to leave not knowing where he was going. And when he did, God appeared to him. God didn't appear to him then. God appeared to him when he left and said, God, where do you want me to go? Just leave. What? Just leave. Where? I don't. Just leave. Okay, honey, we're going to go not knowing where we're going, but we're leaving. And guess what? God showed up. Moses decided, Moses was like, Lord, I'm going to do it here in, 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 in Egypt. And God said, you can't do it in Egypt. You're going to leave. What do you mean leave? I can't leave. I'm going to do it here. Remember he killed that person? Buried him. He says, look, this is how I'm going to do it. You're not going to do it that way. And when he left, that's when the burning bush happened. The mountain experience happened is when he left, made a decision. The woman with the issue. You can put your name in there. Mondo with the issue. John with the issue. We all have issues. She had an issue with blood. You might have an issue with anger, an issue with, with over this and over that and doing too much. You have an issue. And until she made a decision, the Bible says she, she spoke to herself and said, I need to get up and I'm going to go and do what I need to do. And she made a decision and she transitioned. And then a miracle happened. You see, you can make all the decisions in the world, but unless you make a transition and do something, that's when the miracle happens. You can say all day long... Pastor, I'm going I'm to be, be with the dream team. Oh, yeah, I'm going to help. I'm going I'm to be a part of the life group. Yeah, I'm going to do this. But until you do it, nothing's going to change. <laughs> Some of you haven't been through grow. Get into grow. Make a decision. I'm going to learn about who I am and how God made me. So then you can do and do what you were called to do. Jesus made the ultimate decision to die for you. And as a result, salvation and eternal life was given to us. Based on a man who is God, all God and all man came and made a decision to die for us, salvation came. Number one, if you're, if you're waiting on God, you're backing up, not moving forward. If you're waiting on God, you're backing up. 
The Lord is ready to move, but he does not move in your life until you make a decision and transition. Until you made a decision. When you gave your life to the Lord, you said, Lord, I want to give my life to the Lord. Great. You've been saved. Your spirit is now renewed. But now you need to work on your own life. God's already saved your soul. He saved your, he's already saved your spirit, your spirit, man. But now you need to work on that nasty attitude you have. Come on, somebody. You're like, well, Lord, take the attitude away. Well, work on your mouth there. They've got to work on it. Work on your attitude. Well, Lord, just, just, just take it away. No. It, it call, you know how you take it away? It's with getting into the word, getting around other people. I, I want to stop talking negative. Well, get around positive people. They'll tell you, stop it. I don't like getting around negative people. When I do, I'm all like, dude, you need to start thinking positive, man. And I keep on correcting them and correcting them, and eventually they don't want to hang out with me. Well, good, I didn't want to hang out with you either. Okay. You need to hang out with people. You don't take it, people. When people tell you something negative against your life, you say, no, I don't receive that. I don't receive that. God, God, that's a blessing for me. And you know what? Nobody can curse what God has blessed. Amen? You might think, well, I'm waiting on the Lord to do it for me. I want to feel led. And God says, you need to get the lead out. Get out. How many times has Pastor Steve got to say something? How many times has that guy say all this stuff? How many times you got to hear the word of God? And how many times you got to hear it until you finally say, okay, I'll make a decision. I'm going to make a decision, but we all make decisions. Yes, I raise my hand, raise my hand. But we have to transition and you have to go do it for the blessing to come. That's the key that we're missing. When the church, when all of us get together as a church body, and we make a decision to say, we're, here's the vision. We're going to love God, love people. We're going fi- to fi- find our purpose, and we're going to find it, and we're going to make a difference in our life. When we all get together and we get unified in that, the Bible says revival will happen. Because the Bible says that they were all in the upper room when the Holy Spirit, and they were all in one accord, and the Holy Spirit came and came upon them, and they spoke in many tongues. And the Spirit of God was moving upon them. And they went out and did great exploits. You want to be used by God. You want to see your life change. You want to have revival in your marriage, revival in your life, revival in your money, revival in everything. Well, then you need to get more closer to God and make a decision that 2020, I'm going to get serious. I'm sorry. This is not a very feel-good message, but it's going to, it's for you. Sometimes you got to eat broccoli for the word of God. You know, you know, you don't want to eat, you know. Sometimes you got to eat the things, but I have a belief, I really feel that God is prophesying to you and telling you and speaking to you today. And many of you are, are, are looking at 2020 and going, man, it's going to be the same. I'm here to prophesy. I'm here to tell you it's not going to be the same. God's going to move on your life in a, in a great way, in an unknown way, and it's going to be unknown to you. But you're going to have to walk by faith. And believe God in his word that he's going to do it, not the way you think it's going to be, but the way he should, it should be. He's already set plans in motion. He's already setting things in motion that you don't know, but you need to walk in that blessing. And you need to make a decision. Look what it says in James 1, 8 in the message. Don't think that you're going to get anything from the Lord or the master that way. Adrift, keeping all your options open. Have you ever heard of people saying, I just want to keep my options open? I'm not going to, no, 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 I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to be a part of the church because uh, you never know, I might need to leave, I need somebody to go do something, I'm, I'm going to keep everything open. That person is wishy-washy, kind of like back and forth. There's no, there's no yes or no, it's a gray. We don't want to make a decision because it sounds great, but we push it off, and we push it off, and we push it off. What is that pushing off, what is the word? It's called procrastination. Ooh, it's a big word, procrastination. Procrastination is a very bad word because here's the definition of procrastination. It's to put off intentionally the doing of something that should be done, but because it's boring, come on, hard or fearful, we don't want to do it. Even the word procrastination, the word pro means forward. Chronestis, or C-R-A-S-T-I-N-S, means tomorrow. To push it to tomorrow. 
Ah, tomorrow I'll do it. Tomorrow I'll cut the yard. Tomorrow I'll clean the garage. Tomorrow I'll start the diet. <laughs> Come on, Zora. Tomorrow I'll look for a job. Tomorrow I'll do this. Tomorrow I'll call the pastor. Tomorrow. And you are a professional tomorrower. Is that a word? You're a professional tomorrower. Pushing things to the morrow. Tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. You know why? Because you're afraid to talk to that person. You're afraid to confront that person and tell them that what they need to hear. You're afraid to look at the bills. You're afraid to talk to your wife or your husband. You're afraid to talk to your kids. You're afraid to look at the problem in your life and say, yeah, I'm, I'm this and I'm that. I need help. You're afraid. And what do, the Dr. Carolyn Leaf, she's a, she's a, a PhD, a doctor in, 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 in the, for the mind, and she has a book called Switch on Your Brain. It's a great book. She uses medical terms and scripture to back up all these things. You know, doctors think, oh, it's this, 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 this. And she goes, no, 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 it's all in the word of God. Everything's in the word. And she says this, the more times you push aside an unpleasant task, the more times you think about it, it can become something even more unpleasant than it already is. And it becomes stressful. You make it a habit to get it done first thing first so you don't cause mental distress. Because she says, the more times you push things off, your brain doesn't, doesn't do that. Your brain goes, I know you pushed it off, but I'm thinking about it. And every time you deal with a problem, you go, I'll deal with it later. 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 I'll deal with, Lord, I'll deal with that later. I'll deal with that later. Your brain doesn't realize it. It keeps on. And we says, I, dude, I got 50 things that what I'm thinking about here. And then you wonder why your blood pressure is high. You wonder why you're anxious. You wonder why you can't sleep. You wonder why you're overeating. You wonder why you, all these things are happening. And in your brain, you've got too many things going on. Unresolved things. Because you fail and are afraid to make a decision. And all this time, we need to make a decision. In the Bible, Joshua ran into this. Joshua 18.3, it says, then Joshua asked him, how long are you going to procrastinate? I can just put the word wait. How long are you going to wait before taking possession of the remaining land of the Lord, our God, that your ancestors, ancestors that he gave you? How long are you going to wait here? And the reason why they were waiting is because they were procrastinating. They didn't want to fight the giants. But God had already said, you're going to win. But no, we don't want to fight. I don't want to, I don't want to have to do, I don't, we don't want to have to confront them. I don't want to see the giant because that's scary. And some of you don't want to look at the problem. You don't want to see the problem, but God is saying, confront it. Look at that giant and speak to that mountain to be thou removed and be cast into the sea. Speak to it. It's not until you confront your giants that victory will not come. Victory will come when you face your problems and make a decision. See, when you're afraid to look at yourself and go, man, I got a problem. I got to go get help. I got to go get help. I, got, I need help. And people have the wrong, we, we just can't do that. We don't want to say, I, I have a problem and I need help. You need to confront that. You might need to confront somebody else, a friend, and say, I'm going to help you, bro. I know it's going to make you mad, but I'm going to tell you what it is because a friend will tell you exactly what you need to hear. And as, 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 as Christians, we need to come and, with love and tell people, and, and encourage them to make a change. Israel hesitated to confront their problems, and they feared they're too much, and that God had already told them, take the land, and they said no. And right now today, 2020, you're in 19, about to make a change. I'm encouraging you to take 2020 land right now. Take the land. Say 2020 is going to be a great, be, a great year. It's the year my family is going to increase. It's the year my, my marriage is going to do this. It's the year I'm going to get a raise. It's the year that I'm going to this. It's the year. It, it's already start speaking. 2020, I'm going to get you. I'm going I'm to take a hold of you. Don't just lay on the tracks of life and wait for the train to run you over. And take advantage. Take hold of your life. Number two, decisions involve transitions. A transition. Decisions involve transitions. 
A lot of times people don't want to make a transition. They don't want to get rid of things. Come on, some of you hoarders. Hallelujah. I'm not pointing out nobody, but let's just say. Transi- you, you, one thing, you, don't like, you have a routine. I park here. I sit in that seat. Somebody's in my seat. I get mad. Somebody's parking in my spot. Some of you have some socks that are back from the 70s. You need to get rid of them. Come on. Transition. You have some T-shirts that have multiple holes. I like it, honey. No, get rid of it. That sucker can stand up by itself. Come on. 70% to 80% of Americans don't fear change. No wonder when the Lord tells us to change, we, we, we push it aside because we don't want to change. A decision, let's get this, a decision is the, is the vehicle that your dream rides on. Your dream needs a vehicle. And when it, the dream needs something to ride on, and until you make a decision, that dream can't ride on it. Martin Luther King says, I have a dream, but he had a dream, but he also got a vehicle, and he started making transition, and change happened. He didn't just say, I had a dream. He, made, he started moving on that dream. And when he had that dream, he made a decision to talk about and bring up all these things about slavery and, and being uh, all, the, all the things that were happening bad. It finally made a decision. It moved and destiny happened and change happened. And that's the way we need to be. And I wrote this down in your notes. This dreams, decisions, and discipline equal destiny. Dreams. Decisions and discipline equals destiny. The strength of your decision determines the strength of your discipline. The strength of your decision will determine the strength of your discipline. How disciplined are you? It all determines. It all determines how that is. Number three, your destiny is on the horizon. It's just right around the corner. It's just around the corner. A lot of us think it's it's never going to come. Who's to say that it just might be next month you get you see that blessing come? Joseph was in the, in the prison, and he, he could have said, I'm going to give up. And next thing you know, here, come, here they come to come get him, and the, and the king is asking him to come, and he becomes the, the second most powerful person in Egypt. It was the next day. Who knows that next day might be coming? Just because hard times come, a little bit of this hard time does should not deter you away from your, what God has for your life. How many of you believe right now, how many of you believe that God is ready to bless you, that God has a, a future? God has a future for your life. How many of you believe, those of you with, with kids, how many of you believe that your kids have a destiny, have, have a future? How many of you want your kids blessed? How, then you need to start talking it and you need to start telling them that you're blessed. You're blessed, honey. You're going to do better than me. You're going to do better than us. You're going to go to another level. I want you to do better than me. I want you to go further than me. I want you to go to the next level. You can do it. And you need to start speaking to them and telling them, dream. What do you want to do, honey? I want to do this. Yes, you can do it. You can be a lawyer. You can be a doctor. You can do a congress. You can be whatever you want to be. And you just encourage them to dream. We've stopped dreaming. We've stopped dreaming and we're just living life. That's not the plan. There's a plan for your life. There's a plan that God has for you. You may not think, you might know, but 2020 has plans. 2019, 28, 2020 will not be like 2019. Let me give you a few scriptures and we're going to close it up. Jeremiah 29, 11, we all know it. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, amen. Not to harm you, but plans to give you a hope and a future. Look what it says in the Moffat translation. For I keep in mind my purpose for you a purpose of will and not of woe, to let you have a hope and a future. Here's another translation. I have not lost sight of my plans for you, saith the Lord. The Lord says that it's in your welfare that I have in mind for you, not undoing the things, but for you to have a destiny and a hope. Here's another translation, the Jerusalem. I have reserved for you a future full of hope. God's got plans. Are you a part of that plan? Do you want to know the plan? Because every obstacle in life has a limited lifespan. Every obstacle you have, just like the milk in your refrigerator. Some of you have, it says September still. I don't know. I don't know. But every 
item has a limited lifespan. And I'm here to tell you and to speak to you in your life that that obstacle, that trial, it's going to expire. And it's going to die off. It cannot last forever. When you get God in your life, that trial, that problem, that obstacle is going to have, it's going to die. Amen? And just believe that. Look what it says, and I'm going to encourage you with more scripture. Ephesians 1, verse 7. Because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, his blood poured out on our altar of cross, we're a free people, free of penalties, free of punishment, chalked up by all our misdeeds, not just barely free either, abundantly free. Come on. He thought of everything, provided for everything we could ever possibly need. 2020 already has your provision waiting for you. Come on. He, letting us in on the plans he took such delight in making. He set it all out before us in Christ. Look at this. A long-range plan. Come on, say a long-range plan. God didn't just make a little short plan. A long-range plan. He said you're blessed from the end to the beginning. He didn't bless you from when you were born to when you die. He says, I'm going to bless you from when you die all the way to when you were born. God works that way. Look what it says then. He took such delight in making this. He set it out before us in Christ, a long-range plan. It's in Christ that we find out who we are and why we're living here on this world. It's in Christ. We need to. it. De destiny is not something that by chance, but something is not to be waited on. Destiny is something to be achieved. It's something to go after. Destiny doesn't lie in the stars, but destiny lies within our heart. What lies behind us and what lies before us are very, very small. But what lies within us determines if we're going to be able to hit destiny. And God already told us in his word that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You can do all things. Come on, let's give him a praise. Come on. Here's another scripture. I'm going to encourage you with scripture. Your life is a journey. You must travel it with deep consciousness of God. It's in 1 Peter. It costs God plenty to get you out of that dead-end, empty-headed life you grew up in. He paid with Christ's sacred blood, you know. He died like an unblemished sacrificial lamb. And this was no afterthought. He thought of it only, he didn't think of it just only lately, but he thought of it at the end of all age, become public knowledge. God always knew he was going to do this for you. He always knew it. It's because of the sacrificed Messiah whom God has raised from the dead and glorified that, that you trust God and you know you have a future in God. It's because of Christ. It's because of him. This world's going to try to distract you, but I'm going to encourage you, don't be distracted by the problem. Here's the last one. Number four, you're living your life up to the potential of what's inside of you. Are you living your life up to the potential that you're, some of you are living below what you should be doing? Some of you have done this to your life. Here's this. Some of you have said, here's what my dreams are, but I'm going to lower my dreams so I can achieve it. But really, your dreams should be higher. See, we lower our expectations just to meet a temporary feeling good instead of raising our expectations and say, I'm going to go higher. I'm going to think higher. I'm going to think higher thoughts, higher beliefs. I'm going to think and I'm going to speak different. See, here are some questions I have for you as we close. Are you working on your life? Or you wor are you working in your life or are you working on your life? See, you can work in your job or you can work on your job. You can be a better employee, better at what you do. Or are you just working there? Are you working in your life or are you working on your life? You're becoming a better person. I want to be nicer. I want to be a blessing. Well, how do you do that? It's God's word that changes us. It's getting around the right people. It's coming to church. It's being around because as iron sharpens irons, other people sharpen you. And you need to get around other people. You know what that old saying is? You lay with dogs, you get fleas. You know how they say? So if you lay, if I, am I hanging out with you, some of that goodness and some of those good words might jump on me and I start saying good things. Are you with me? Are you making a quality decision in terms of your spiritual growth? Have you even thought about your spiritual life? You might think in your financial life, your physical life, but have you talked about your spiritual life? Are you, just a, are you coming to church just to come to church? Or are you doing things that are going to grow your spirit instead of just, I'm just a churchgoer. 
I'm a professional churchgoer. Hallelujah. I'm a multi-year member. What have you done? Nothing. I'm just sitting here. Coming to church doesn't make you into that. Just like being in a garage doesn't make you a car, okay? Being in church requires you to get involved. Requires you to be a part of something. And when you engraft yourself into others, you'll then start to get other people's uh, looking at things. And people are going to encourage you. And other person is going to bless you. And then you're going to bless somebody else. And all of a sudden, your life changes. But see, what are you doing about your spiritual growth? Here's the last one. Are you reading God's word and praying daily? Are you building up new relationships, mending other relationships, and cutting off bad ones? Are you doing that? Are you going to make it a choice? 2020, I'm going to find new relationships. I'm going to mend some old relationships that, I, that are bad, that I just really need to say I'm sorry or I need to confront. Or are you going to cut off some people that need to be cut off and say, God, I, I know I'm going to lose some friends, but I'm going to find some in Solid Rock. I'm going to find some here. And you ain't going to find them just sitting down at the seat by yourself and don't say hi. And you're like, no, don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. Don't. You know how you find friends? On purpose. You sign up. You get to be a part of a group. Get in a life group. Get in a dream team. And that's how you make friends. And then that's how God says, great, now I have an avenue to bless you. Now I have a way to bless you. Now I can bless you through that dream team, through that leader, through that growth track, through this. I can start blessing you because now you've made available paths and avenues for me to bless you. But you can't just sit there and say, where well, I'm waiting on you. Things will never change until you take a hold of it. Here's the last scripture, 1 Peter 4.4. 4. And of course, your old friends don't understand why you don't join in with the old gang anymore. But you don't have to give them an account to them. They're the ones who will be called to the carpet and before God himself. You take control of your life. Don't blame other people. Well, it's because of them. I'm, this is the reason why I'm like this. Don't. Take responsibility for your life. Don't blame church, pastors, anybody else. Well, I'm this way because of this, a divorce, of this. That was a situation. It doesn't form, it doesn't say who you are. You might have been in prison while I was, I'm an ex-con. No, that's, that's what happened. That doesn't define you. You know what defines you? The word of God that says you're a child of God. You're a son of God. You're a child of the king. You are blessed. You can do all things through Christ. That defines you, amen? Stop letting your past dictate your future. Stop letting your past and your mistakes dictate your future. You are blessed and you can do all things. There are blessings waiting for you. There are things happening. And I'm telling you this, things are going to change when we make a decision. Amen? Come on, let's all stand together. Come on. Let's praise God. Let's worship him. I know this. Bad leaders can encourage and make good leaders. But good leaders, if they hang around with bad people, bad leaders can be influenced. And you need to also understand that you need, you need each other. You need everybody in this church. You may not know them. You might say, well, I don't know anybody. Well, whose fault is that? Well, they're supposed to come to me. No. Get involved. Well, I'm shy. If I said I had $100 here, how shy would you be? I got a car waiting for you out there. I'm going to bless you. Oh, okay. Come on. You do, no, you, be, you won't be shy. We need to take control. We need to make a decision. How many of you are ready to make a decision, right? I don't want to live the way I've been living. I want to be, I, I want my mind to be, I want to live a, a peaceful mind. I want to have a peaceful thoughts. I want to have peaceful things. But the, the greatest thing that you can ever make a decision on is giving your life to Christ.